right. Okay. Driving Home Podcast, episode eight, Woo! season two. Season two. Yeah. Wow. Pretty crazy. Exactly. So, hey, I did not get to be here. True. Uh, but through the wonders of technology, Modern. and thank you, Al Gore, for the internet, <laughs> I was able to watch it. And yeah. so I enjoyed it. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thankful. Um, you may not know if you're listening on this. Um, you kind of stepped into some pinch hit duty. Like that was a text <laughs> to not. Now yeah. I don't know. Was it a blessing to not have months to think about that text, or was it harder knowing you only had about a week to think about it? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I could see that if I had longer and just knowing, I could see like you kind of get stuff down. And then you kind of rethink it and they're like, oh, no, 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 you know, and, and maybe you just revise it and redo it. And then you're like, you're overthinking it. So that could be the con to that. Having a short period of time, then you, you know, you get put together and then afterwards you're like, oh, I could have, I could have done this. I could, you know, done this and this. And so, so yeah, I mean, pros and cons either way, but you know, God's faithful. So pretty much laid out what I felt like he placed in my heart and yeah. he went okay. So yeah. no one didn't see anyone running out, you know, or screaming. So yeah. all right. yeah. good, good. Um, we always talk like me and Marco a lot of times yeah. and the other guys too. And with that element of like, okay, you're, you're first of all researching. There's a lot in that passage. Yeah. Um, a lot that we didn't cover yesterday or Sunday. We're not even going to cover today. Like right. there's just a lot. Then you're in a limited time frame. Plus, you're not just saying, you know, our calling is never just like, can you be a verbal commentary and get mm -hmm. up and just walk people through? It's to preach. Right. It's to have an agenda and a purpose behind it. So upon doing all of that, one of the hardest things in preaching is realizing there's just some things that are going on the cutting room floor. Right. Like they just don't make it into the sermon. Right. You know, whether it's things in the text or applications that could come. Did you have any of those that the podcast offers you an opportunity to kind of <laughs> I feel like there was probably some different things that I could have like maybe added some additional points to. Um, yeah. But then, but then you fight the, the, the thing of like, well, then do I, does that then become a rabbit trail? But um, mm -hmm. I was trying to think what was the one I just, I'm totally blanking right now. Share with you just a little bit ago. Uh, the statement Paul makes near the end. I don't want to say it. If this nope, is the one you want to say. That's not it. Okay. That's early on. Yeah, yeah, is yeah. there an, uh, like I said, I could have went in more into the, oh, um, um, no. this is good oh, radio folks. I know this is great. This is good stuff. And then, yeah, this is live. This would be yeah. live. Um, ah, near the beginning of the passage. Uh, let's see. Let's pull the passage up folks yeah, right. right there in yeah. front of us. Exactly. So um, don't pick your nose cause you can't see the screen, uh, but they, they would see you do it. Right. Okay. Come on. For sure. <laughs> We're finding it really, really quickly. <laughs> Technology is totally oh, yeah, right, right now. Right, right, right worst yeah. podcast ever sorry okay sorry everybody is it uh, okay uh there we go da, 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 there we go food stomach no things don't need uh, bodies not for sexual hours. i think one thing while you're looking is interesting the the threads that are there that are hard mm -hmm. when we're preaching sermons because it becomes one week at a time mm -hmm. we get a glimpse of first corinthians 15 that's coming yeah like that he's saying okay your breakdown in your application is because you're separating body and soul mm -hmm. and god cares about both because he's going to resurrect the body right which gets to first corinthians 15 where they've jacked up the whole doctrine of the resurrection right and there's some that argue that they think that's really the main point that comes all the way through the book which you know, he has the, the one statement in there where he talks about, and God raised the Lord will also raise us by his power. Right. That's like, we're going to get there in First Corinthians 15, a lot of detail, but it's interesting to see he doesn't dwell on it long. Like, that's why I think you didn't go there right. big time in the sermon because he yeah, like, makes sense and then he moves yeah. on. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically, I think that uh, uh, one of the things when I was talking, like, you know, when you're fleeing and running, I, I didn't really go into like, you know, battling sin or you know what it means to really fight sin obviously Ephesians unpacks the armor of God the sword of spirit and so there are things like you know sin comes and you immediately just run away you know and you don't ever try to fight you know I was making the point obviously you can't fight on your own you fight with Christ at your side you know and so you know yeah, you just, didn't get really to uh, unpack that point of like it's no, not you just, just yelled at us right exactly well, scared, scared me into flames everybody was alert <laughs> everybody was there everyone paid attention at that point so people were dozing they were totally there yeah that's there that so um but yeah just making you know and i didn't hopefully make that mm -hmm. that point mm -hmm. clear and if not hopefully this makes it clear 
um, with the idea that, you know, obviously sin is there. And so we do need to, there are times where we just need to flee, get away from the situation, whatever. Uh, there are moments where it's not convenient. So you, you have to battle sin. And sometimes that's just, you can't flee from sin, but you have to fight against sin. And so it is, you can't do that on your own. You have to do that with Christ. And so being able to like, maybe take just a few more minutes to kind of unpack that may have been okay, but yeah again that's just one example yeah. so well yeah. to encourage you i feel like you got there because okay. you're you're talking about very clearly like let's not play with sin let's right. not think it's something that we can master and handle right How about the snake you yeah. know that if you heck yeah you you put me on a ladder and a snake and i'm dead <laughs> meat right but right. like the the whole thing of like nobody sit there and just make commentary on it right or yeah I, I can handle it if it gets near me it's like no we would recognize the danger and separate out so i think you you got there yeah um, i think that was also one of the biggest things too i i felt i felt like it was a really good illustration um that very, was, very humble too yeah to, to point that i thought it was best i thought it was a good illustration I, I thought it was a good illustration that god laid on my heart thank you oh, right there you okay, go there it is cool. take it, it up is. jesus yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, yeah. anyways um uh, <laughs> Because when I'm putting it together and wanting something like, and then that just kind of came to me and everything. And I just thought, oh my gosh, that is, that is so good. Um, because that was for me, when I'm sitting here putting this all together, it made me kind of pause and like, oh my gosh, if I treated sin that way, if I looked at it that way, I mean, cause we do, we just casually dismiss it or something comes in and we're toying with a thought before we even realize I shouldn't be even messing with this thought. What am I doing right now? And we just, if you looked at like a snake coming in or coming near you, you wouldn't toy with that. And be like, oh, that looks, you know, it looks dangerous down there or whatever. You would immediately deal with it, you know? So, yeah. Secondary is I've yeah. seen the like fundamentalist pastor clips that come on the internet and yeah. stuff. There's a whole Twitter vine for it. Thankful you didn't pull an actual gun out for the illustration. You know, but just yeah. spoke of the idea yeah. of Wayne one because it is like I've seen bad situations where guys <laughs> to try and make the illustration decide. Today yeah. I'm going to wield yeah. a weapon, and it's like let's not do that from the pulpit. Yeah. So thank you. I thought if I'd done that, then you know, even if I made sure, like, see, it's all it's it's empty and everything. No one, I, all the points would be missed completely. Well, and so. I figured you actually wanted to use like a bat throwing star wow, or just saying. something yeah Could something cool. too. yeah so hey one of the things that happened and i and i i know where you were going and tracking mm -hmm. and i was right along with it too um porneia yep. is the word for sexual immorality yep so we've kind of even hit that a little bit marco yeah, talked marco, about a little bit yeah. you did too that like sexual immorality an an easy app or a, an obvious application and an and a evident application mm -hmm. for us is pornography Right. Paul goes the route of <coughs> prostitution, mm -hmm. which we might circle back around to near the end and talk about sure. why he even brought that up. So I thought it was good. Like you brought in, and I, I think what you were doing with like the statistics you showed and everything was mm -hmm. to say, like, this is pervasive in our culture. Right. This is a, it's tempting for us to look at Corinth and think, man, it was such a sexualized culture. We don't live in that day today. Right. When it's like, we are every bit as much. Right. So here's what I want to do. I want to take, some people don't even know. So like mm -hmm. one of your primary areas of oversight here at the church is care. Mm -hmm. You meet with people and right. they might think of it as like counseling or coaching, or you kind of set up systems to help with that. So let's say, even if we go with the statistic of mm -hmm. like 50% of the men in the room right. are, are in the middle of struggling mm -hmm. with the issue of pornography. And they hear you lay out these statistics that say like, okay, it's prevalent. Mm -hmm. Um, it's destructive. Mm -hmm. Looking at the passage you had and tackling it, let's just imagine, because because we've seen this yeah. with our church, and I guess legitimately doing this right now, if this is you listening to this podcast, man or woman, you were there for the sermon, or you heard the sermon, or you're only just catching this podcast, but you know that pornography has a grip on you, right? and you don't want that to be the case. Right. Let's put that person right now on the other side of this table mm -hmm. and just give you a little bit of the floor to say what what would you how would you start to walk them through that what would that look like yeah uh well i think that one of the key things that was pointed out to me a long long time ago um when, when discussing porn and just things of that nature is that porn typically that's not the issue um that's a symptom and it's a big deal symptom um but it's not normally the root um Normally your root is something else and it could be something as, not this is basic, but as the fact of 
you're not really recognizing your identity in Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm still seeing myself in bondage. I'm still seeing myself as, you know, less than, but not like in a, in the appropriate way as the fact like I'm, I am less than when it comes to God, but just in like a shameful, you know, way or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I think for me, it would be the idea of talking to somebody and trying to drill down what is, what's kind of the root of, of that, you know, what, what led to this, what's time frame, you know, that kind of thing. But then also, um, I think when it comes to porn in general, it's, it really is so just, <laughs> it's so pervasive. It is just so everywhere. And so it really is the idea. Um, someone told me one time, they, they set like these boundaries, like in their head. Um, and they set them way far out. And they, and he, and he told me, he goes, I recognize that where my boundaries are at, that's not where other people's are at. And it might seem extreme to other people. But I know myself and I know that I can't do X, even though a lot of other people can, I can't even go near that because I just recognize that then slippery slope, whatever. And so I think it's also the idea of, of recognizing that if if I struggled with alcohol, I, I wouldn't keep alcohol in my house. Why would I? You know, and I wouldn't go to bars, you know. Um, the unfortunate thing, you know, with porn, and like I even shared on Sunday, is there's so many enticing images all over the place. So if you're on Instagram and you've seen these a lot, maybe you shouldn't be on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I get that's a connection thing, but you know, what's, what's the choice? I just constantly deal with those images. And so therefore it's constantly affecting me, which then constantly leads me to this behavior, this attitude, this mindset that I hate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well then you have to make choices. Sometimes that's hard choices. And so I guess that's just some of where I would might start with, you know, in the conversation with everybody, but I think the really the, the biggest key I would I want them to know is the fact that like there's hope. You know, this mm -hmm. this is not your identity. This is not your identity in Christ. This is not who you are. This is not something that you have to necessarily struggle with to the level that they may feel like they are. Like I you know, understand this is just this is my burden. I'm not gonna carry it on my life. It may be a struggle, sure. Everyone's got their propensity to different things. You know, I'm, I've never been tempted to do meth, you know, never been my thing, but that, I mean, it's not a real struggle for other people, mm -hmm. you know, it's just different things for different people. So you may have a, a propensity to that's just, just my weakness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's recognize it. And then let's help identify that and then identify other things. So then we can pull you to a healthier mindset to where it's not the struggle. It's not the epic battle that always seems to be to where you feel like you lose more than I win and that now you recognize who you are in Christ, you start feeling like, okay, yeah, I still struggle, but it's not like, I feel like I'm constantly in bondage still. I feel like, you know, God doesn't even love me because this is a struggle. I mean, all these different negative things are these incorrect mindset. I mm -hmm. think that'd be where we kind of go to, but yeah. yeah, happy, just like Dan was even saying, if this is you, and this is something that like I'm struggling, I don't know what even really knows. Okay. Let's get together. I mean, hopefully someone would know that if we get together it's not that that becomes public church knowledge that's not right. something we right. share with anybody right in a counseling uh scenario um but yeah and, and it's not the idea that you're gonna come in you're gonna lay this all out i'm going to freak out and go oh my gosh wow that that's really bad you know and oh i don't even know what to do that's not the point the point is okay let's hear where you're at okay now what can we do to work on it what can we do to get it better because this is not how it should be yeah so yeah i think yeah. of the was it first corinthians later that no temptation has come upon you except right. it's common to man and mm -hmm. god is faithful and will always provide a way out so it's like yeah. we'd want to bring the person in and and it doesn't become the scarlet letter it doesn't right. become a black cloud it exactly. doesn't forever change our relationship right you're gonna actually one of the best things we hear a lot of times when we're trapped in sin is that you're not alone yeah, like the the immediate lie that comes to us, we see in the garden when they mm -hmm. they believe the lie that God's rules are just restriction yep. and kill joy, which is kind of what you talked about with mm -hmm. sexual immorality right. and how we convince ourselves it's okay. Um, they believe that lie, they act upon that lie, and then they immediately feel separated from God and each other. Right, and so sometimes a person comes in and you, you're totally afraid that I'm going to confess sin and it's going to isolate me from everybody, and we want to first right. come along and say. Even if the temptation is manifesting self in a different way, we right. all have the same struggles. Absolutely. But that's not because I feel like the world does one or the other, right? Mm -hmm. You either ostracize the person right. and act like they're a monster, or we tell them, oh, it's okay. 
That's, yeah. that's, I don't, I mean, I'm not even it's sure it's a wrong thing. Right, minimize it to right? the point that so doesn't matter. We yeah. want to come alongside of that and go, mm-hmm. no, there's destruction to your relationships. There's yeah. destruction to yourself, which Paul kind of got into with this. Right, passage. a little bit. But then also, it's destructive in your view of God. Definitely. And I think that was the the yeah. thing like you you brought out. And it just, man, it feels like almost every week we could go back to Genesis 3. Yeah. That it's like, we read the Bible post fall mm-hmm. and so we are tempted to hear that whisper of satan that's like yes this book has truth but what you're really going to see is god gets all the joy and all the freedom and he's killing your joy and mm-hmm. he's he's giving you these rules that hold you right down. and you kind of hit that like that a little bit there was a time in your life you very much thought the mm-hmm. bible is just a book of rules right yeah absolutely yeah uh, you know, it, early on and, and then having conversations with people, um, you know, why would I want to be a Christian? Because, you know, it's just a bunch of rules. They're outdated. The book's archaic. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's not relevant. You know, like all these things that I kind of allude to on, on Sunday and said. Um, and really, when you get down to it, it, yeah, I mean, that's why I even said what I said, that it is actually a book of rules um, that bring you in line with God. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's kind of an important little those are two words that are really important there because it is it's with God. It's the fact that once I do start looking in the Bible and then I, I see God's provided a son for me and I start to recognize what salvation is and what the gospel is, then I see, okay, so God loves me so much. He did all this. And then he says, hey, and so here's some, here's some things that I want to show you, teach you, have you do, have you not do, because that's all going to help you you know, live for me, glorify me, um, resist temptations, you know, all these things are, are helpful. Um, I give my, my children, I know you do too. I, I give them rules and guidelines. I don't uh, give your kids a lot of rules. Well, no, I, no, that would be, wow. Yeah. So, um, but, uh, uh, I give them rules and guidelines yeah. because I love them. Yeah. And I recognize, Hey, don't play in the street. Cars come by. There's no cars right now. But they could come by, and if you're not paying attention, you you could get injured badly, you know. And so, and that seems like well, such a well done moment. Uh, but then there's you know God laying out certain things that He's like, well, don't do this. And so certain things we look at, I think I think that's part of the issue. We look at certain things, you know, thou shalt not kill. Oh well, yeah, of course I'm not going to kill anybody, you know. Um, but then He talks about well, don't covet. And then we're like, oh well, I mean, yeah. that's a little bit closer home because that one's that's an easier one to maybe indulge in or play with or whatever. And so, but there's still a reason why he says, Hey, don't do that. You know? And so, I don't know. I I guess when I look at the idea that someone would say, it's just a bunch of rules. It's like, yeah, it's to help me live a a godly Christian life so that I'm following him and not following myself. I suck. If I'm following what I want to do all the time, I don't even know where I'm going to end up. I mean, it's not going to be in the, the, the best place, but if I'm listening to him, following him and seeking to honor him by listening and obeying, that's always going to lead me to better places, better choices, just better outcomes. Yeah, they, it gets back to that. And sometimes we oversteer, right? right. The pendulum swings too yeah. far. So you'll hear people say, you know, God doesn't care about your happiness. He cares about your holiness. Right. And it's like, in one sense, yes, what could be more pleasing to God, me to focus on doing what I want while well, we end up like First Corinthians 6, right. or focusing on what's holy. Yeah, mm-hmm. God wants, but I think it misses mm-hmm. that the element we understand the true character and nature of God is God wants you finding your happiness in right. holiness, right. like that, that it's that trust that, yeah, discipline is not fun right like, whether it's self-discipline of going to the gym or mm-hmm. whether it's like being disciplined it's not fun in the moment but it it brings fruit right. eternal fruit and we find our joy in it and i think you know you're thinking like the the play in the street when it's so funny for us because like in our culture today we're like well yeah duh and knowing the road you live on with the hills yeah, well, stuff, yeah. And the speed people are going to be horrible yeah, be, <laughs> unless they're playing frogger it doesn't yeah, make sense it's tragic like but then you you watch like movies and shows from like the 1950s and stuff, right. and they're playing stickball, stickball in the out street, in the street, yeah. and and like so. Where did the rule to quit playing in the street come mm-hmm. from? Not a, a a group of parents getting together, going, our children are having too much fun, right? And they're becoming too athletic, right? And goodness knows we're throwing ourselves at that idol, right? right? It's no. The issue is 
there could be harm here. Yeah. And I think that's that's part of the beauty of where uh, Paul's really kind of taking us and calling us of like, this isn't just about law. All things are mm-hmm. lawful for me. It's like, you're just holding you in bondage and it's not right. good for you. And it, I think that's the beauty of them when Jesus shows up mm-hmm. and says, my burden is easy. My yoke is light. Right. That it's like, if we first understand the freedom from sin that's been made available to us, why, right. the, the, t- the sure of illustration, you know, why would we keep going back to that? Why wouldn't we go to the cleansing that the Lord offers and move forward? You kind of made a statement and it reminded me of your last point. So I'm going to just poke at that okay. one for a second, give you a chance to unpack that in sure. a different direction. It had the effect you wanted <laughs> of when I saw the outline come up and the last one is, is it my body, my choice? Mm-hmm. Or it, it had the phrase in it. Yeah. Okay. I'm hearing that phrase mm-hmm. either used by the left right. on the issue of abortion, mm-hmm. my body, my choice, pro-choice, been hearing it (laughs) from those who definitely wouldn't consider themselves on the left Mm -hmm. when the whole mask issue came right of saying well wait a minute my body my choice don't you make me you weren't talking about that but you were kind of talking about i mean there's there's a connection right that even gets us beyond like the sexual immorality part so even if there's a person who just as a season, lust, porn, prostitution, mm-hmm. sexual morality is not an issue. They could be tempted to sit there and think, well, I don't have the, the wrong mindset that leads to these actions when they might, right? if they're approaching. So, right. so tease that out a little bit, because that wasn't accidental. That's right. just too clear a phrase. No, that meant for right. Us to think it. And, it, and what's funny is I remember, um, you know, when I'm kind of making the points and, you know, and, and really seeking and looking at the text and, and praying about it. And, you know, I've got the, are we free to indulge? And then, you know, fire flight and I'm, kind of look at the text and, and then that just kind of came to me i'm like and i mean i'm, I'm like i deleted it I'm like i can't oh, can't do that that's what no people are gonna lose their mind and then i came back to it and then i'm like no and so i mean like i wrestled with it and i tried to come up with like other things or whatever and ultimately i just thought man if I'm, if I'm being truthful and honest man that really hits the home of where the text is mm. that's the whole point is you're not your own you were bought with a price and so it's not really your body your choice you know but that's how we treat our lives yes it's a hot button issue for abortion or mask or vaccination or whatever you want to and that i I get that those there's arguments on all that stuff my point was really when it comes to um the choices we do make whether it be you know an abortion or vaccination or literally throw a hundred other things in there my be, money like, my choice my gonna, time my that's choice, why i was just gonna my, say yeah yep, like yep. all these things yep. that, that we selfishly want or desire yeah. um that really when it comes down to it it's not about us it's not about our our choices it's about honoring christ it's about glorifying him you know when you were just trying uh, you know unpacking what you were just doing one of the things i thought about was um you know, seeing the beauty of it and everything, I thought about a cheerful giver. Mm-hmm. You know, we mm-hmm. should obey. We should give our offering, our, our tithe, and everything. But he doesn't want that begrudgingly. <laughs> Here you go, Jesus. Clearly, you need the money. You know that kind of thing. But it should be like, you know what? I, I'm blessed because you provided everything for me. Mm-hmm. I, you know, the, I'm. This is. I love. I enjoy giving because I recognize it's not mine to begin with. I enjoy glorifying God with my body and my actions because it's not really mine anyways, you know, used to be when I was dead in my sin, I was clearly doing all kinds of awful, horrible things, uh, would never have thought uh, or consideration or care about them. And then I was made alive in Christ. And so we're now, you know, still, there's still going to be stumbles and mistakes or whatever, not perfect. um, Like I had said, but it's just the idea that now you know, I need to be conscious. I need to be mindful. Um, if this action is in direct violation to God, his word, why am I doing that? Why am I continuing that? And grand, there's some things that are going to be very clear. They're going to be very black and white. Okay. Other things, not as much, but I guess my thing too, with that then becomes, you're not trying to please the masses and that's, that's fine. You, you don't want to, um, you seeking to please God and Christ. But if, you know, that's why I kind of think why when I, when I made the, the comment about like the lawsuits, you know, and everything yeah, like yeah. which was teased from before is the idea like we're so convinced of society like I have to be right, I have to get my way. You have to know you're wrong. Yeah. And I mean, think of how many times we know Christians going to battle against each other. Everyone walks away damaged. Everyone mm-hmm. walks away hurt. 
and you know your witness is destroyed and you know because unbelievers see that and like oh my gosh i thought he kind of christian you know and i'm not saying that lawsuits are evil they're right. clearly not let's not take right. things to extreme but at the same point in time we're so ready to just go so dialed in emotionally and make sure that my feelings aren't hurt or if you hurt my feelings and i'm hurting your feelings too that's not what we're supposed to be doing yeah. you know what i mean yeah. and so so when it comes yeah. to you know like the my my body my choice I mean, yes, I, I, I do happen to think abortion is very, very wrong yeah. and everything, but that really wasn't the point. Yeah. You know, the point was, as laid out in the text for this particular text, is the fact that, like, you're not your own. You were bought with a price to therefore glorify God in your body. So if you're making choices and doing things that are not glorifying to God, if they're running counter to scripture, you're not glorifying God. And they're also not good for you. Like right. that's that, the, yeah. as you were sharing the, the illustration, I know you yeah. appreciate this came to mind. I'm not going to blame the Holy Spirit for it. Like you have a couple times <laughs> oh in the podcast, but was, that's and cool. I know you appreciate this, Michael Scott pounding fettuccine Alfredo <laughs> before running a 5k because right. it's carbo loading. Right? right. Yeah. Yeah. And you watch it and you cringe. Cause you're like, that's not, not what, what it means. means to carbo what load. Means. Right. And you watch on the show and like Jim and Pam and some others are like, ah, yeah. why don't they say anything? Because let's not get too theological here right. and go deeper than these. Right. Because Michael's a fool. Michael doesn't right. listen to anyone's right. instruction. Do wants, right? yeah. How many times mm. am I slurping the fettuccine Alfredo, thinking right. this is what's really good for me? And God's not trying to kill my joy. He's not trying to keep right. me from winning the race. He's not trying, but he's looking at me with wisdom and going, you're gonna throw yeah, up. That, that's not that's not gonna end you. well, right? And so I don't want to be a Michael Scott. I right. don't want to be the fool who's so convinced that I think what's for my good right. that I bypass what's for God's glory, right? When in reality, part of the pursuit of God's glory is that it will also be for our good, right? So I just to wrap it, bring the full bow back to it. Sure. It's like if you're listening to this and you were thinking like. Okay, so I look at some images some from time to time, or I've, you know, done some things. I think I told you, I, I heard a different preacher say one day that the only difference between prostitution mm -hmm. and pornography is a camera. Mm -hmm. You've still got people getting paid for sexual service. Mm -hmm. um, and you still got most of the time stories of abuse Absolutely. in the midst of that. Right. Um, if you're watching and you're thinking, okay, yeah, Kern shared some statistics and we dwell some of this. I got some sexual immorality in my life. I got some things I'm doing that aren't mm -hmm. right, whatever. Um, but I don't know. I'm not sure it's really that bad. It's not that right. big a deal. We're pleading with you. Please hear us. You right. have a place to be received, to be loved, to Absolutely. work with it. But also what you think is for your good isn't bringing God glory, but it's also going to harm your soul. Right. Um, so... I think that that's just, yeah, my final point I would make too on this is the idea that the more you're toying with sin, and, you know, I tried to at least highlight that on Sunday, a toll will be extracted mm -hmm. at some point, though it may not be a big deal now, and hey, it hasn't ever been really much of an issue, and I've got it under control. Nothing could be more dangerous to think than I have my sin under control yeah. in my own way. Now, at some point, that fire will burn and it will spread beyond. And the only hope would be that it does not destroy everything in your life. But, you know, the more you play with sin, you're just, I don't know, that's just the most dangerous game in the world. I think it was John so, Owen who took the, there's a phrase Paul uses in a different place where he talks about mortifying the flesh. Yeah. Which literally means like kill sin. Mm -hmm. So I think it was John Owen who said, be killing sin or sin will be killing, killing you. you. Right. That's it's pretty true. It really so, is. Man, we went. You, you're getting to be. You're getting to be in the regular rotation here. The sermon <laughs> right. went a little long. The podcast <laughs> is going a little long. You just, I, I'm right just saying, in. you just kept talking. You so know. I'm trying to get short answers. Well, so, yeah. so, so what I've learned from this podcast more than anything is anything mm -hmm. that I do that might be brought into question, I just say that it happened while I was praying that the Holy Spirit put it on my heart, mm -hmm. and now I'm right. Is that where? Yes, yeah, that, that, that's, that's it. it. I mean, somewhere. I got no problem with the Holy Spirit so working. I, in my life. Yeah, I'm glad. So. And he and he was. He was on. Sunday. Sunday. It was a good word and appreciate it. So folks, that's the Driving at Home podcast. Yep. You can text us. We haven't had any questions in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. So this is a reminder, but it's also on the screen every week. But if you have some things, 
1207 and we'll try and address those but otherwise have you heard the do you know the tagline on the way out no i don't i don't Uh, I forget. I forget. Okay, so, I forget the tagline. So let's we'll say. So remember that in Christ, all the work has been finished. Mm-hmm. We're just driving home. Just we're just driving home. Way. Hey! Hey! <laughs>